There's a long history of flooding in Belford, and there's about 35 properties at risk from an extreme event. But the real problem was there was a number of properties that were flooding almost annually on a very frequent basis. The main reason for flooding in Belford is during times of heavy rainfall, the water comes off the, the hillside very quickly. It's quite a steep catchment upstream of the town. So the water runs down very quickly into the town and, and floods the properties. Because traditional flood defences were impossible in Belford, we decided to try a different approach. So we, we were aware of some work Newcastle University had done at Nafferton Farm. So we decided to approach them to see if they would work in a partnership with us to try and reduce runoff in the catchment upstream of the town of Belford. The project has been funded by the Northumbria Regional Flood Defence Committee and they place a levy on local authorities in the area to do projects such as this that don't achieve national funding. The problems that we had in Belford got ever bigger because the changing use of farmland meant that when we had heavy downfalls of rain, it ran very quickly off the farms and came straight down into the roadway and into the villages. The drains couldn't cope with it, the, uh, the, the river through the village overflowed and then we had properties flooded, uh, we had uh, all sorts of foul water coming up as well which was horrid um, and we, we eventually, uh, I, I put out a story that, uh, you know, that sandbags and sympathy were no good and I'm pleased to say that within 10 days I think it was the Environment Agency responded and came in with a team. Uh, with, with Phil and the others and they started to address the problem. When the Environment Agency became involved and the University uh, it quickly became apparent that it wasn't just the, uh, an Environment Agency problem it was multi-agency so again within a very short space of time we had at the same table obviously Environment Agency, Northumbrian Water and the County Council particularly the Highways Department and from, from that with everyone sitting around, everybody had a contribution to make. And it, 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 uh, it, that was how it all started. And then with some very lateral thinking by the university, they, they came up with this scheme whereby they could prevent the rush off of water, slow it all down by something inexpensive. It's like all good ideas. It was so simple when they said it that everybody said, well, why haven't we done that before? At Nafferton Farm, it's where we developed the concept for what we're doing here in Belford. It was on a smaller scale, uh, one square kilometre farm scale, and there we were trialling in corner field ponds along with in-ditch mitigation measures for water quality benefits. But in doing that work, we saw benefits for flooding by the flood peak being delayed and attenuated. In the Belford Burn catchment, we're trialling a variety of different types of mitigation measures to slow the flood peak down and reduce the flood peak before it gets to Belford. At the moment we're up at the top of the catchment upstream of Belford. The pond behind me works by disconnecting flow that's coming across the, across the fields and it stops it getting straight into the river. It also takes flow out of the river upstream of here. The flow comes down into, into the pond and the water is stored in the pond. It's a leaky timber barrier so the, the, the water actually leaks out of the pond slowly and then slowly drains back into the river thereby taking some of the flood peak off the river. Many of the features which we're using in the Belford catchment are ponds to store flood water. The one we're standing at the moment is, a, is what we call an offline pond. It sits next to the river and water flows out of the river channel and is stored in the pond. What happens in time of flood, when the, when the river level gets high, the water spills out of the river channel because we couldn't swale in the, in, in the river bank. And the water then flows down, flows into the pond and is held in the pond. It then drains away slowly and back to the river. The main benefit from features like this is to reduce flood risk downstream because these ponds actually store water uh, during the time of a flood. The water comes in, it's stored and then it's released slowly again after the, after the flood peak has passed. What we'll also start to do in the catchment uh, as the project progresses is make some of the offline ponds uh, as wet areas as well so, so they do benefit the ecology of the catchment and increase the biodiversity that, 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 that lives within this area. The woody debris feature here uses sycamore trees placed across the channel which break down the flow of the river in flood and send it out onto the floodplain here, which is roughened up by these wooden barriers and the low-lying canopy, which has just been planted here. The main benefit of this type of feature is that it slows down the flood peak in the fastest part of the catchment, which means the peak is slower to rise in Belford. As well as putting ponds on the course of the river, what we've also done in Belford is put ponds in the corners of fields to try and capture overland flow. Because when it rains really heavy, the water flows over the land and eventually makes its way to the river and gets down to Belford, creating the flood risk. So what we've done in many locations is actually create ponds in the corners of fields to stop that flow before it even gets to the river. The feature behind me consists of an earth embankment with a, with a timber wall to one end. There's a timber wall 
uh, to allow us to build a sluice gate because that, that allows the farmer to drain down the pond because this pond is actually on an arable field um, but it takes a big part of the catchment, uh, the flow from the catchment running over the land uh, and stores it in this pond before releasing it slowly back to the river. What happens when it's, when it's raining really heavy and when we've had a particularly wet period um, the, the, the rainfall actually doesn't sink into the ground and, and, and flow through to the river, it actually flows across the land uh, and that's what causes the flooding in Belford because you have the rapid runoff uh, from the flow going across the land rather than soaking into the land, it flows across the land and gets into the river. So these, these, ponds, these, these, these ponds in the corners of fields actually stop that overland flow from getting into the river. Another real benefit of features like this in the corner of fields is that when the flow is coming across the land it's actually picking up a lot of sediment off the fields and the fertilisers and things like that. And the, when the water comes into these ponds the, 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 the water slows down, the sediment actually drops out of the water. So it, st it stops those sediments, the, the, the soil off the land effectively being washed down into the river. And when it's in the river then it causes problems with water quality. And what can happen is, the as, we, as we've seen, the, the, the sediment drops out of the, wa the water and the farmer can then take that and put it back on his land. The data that we're collecting uh, includes rain gauge data, so we have uh, a history of rainfall for the last three years. Uh, we collect barometric pressure and temperature, and we collect uh, the pressure which occurs in the river channel itself and which occurs in our ponds. Uh, this basically tells us the water levels at certain points. We also have instruments that can measure the amount of sediment which lies inside the water. The data is then processed so we can see how much rain has fallen and how that has affected the level of the, of the river at any given time and also how it affects the features uh, and how much water they store. Well the data shows uh, the impact of certain features. Um, for instance the, the pilot pond uh, has shown that it can delay a flood peak, uh, actually uh, delay it by up to twice as much from the original data that we were collecting. The data shows uh, that the other features uh, that exist in Belford have a huge impact not only on the rate at which a flow peak travels down the stream but also uh, the size of which that flow peak is when it reaches Belford. Looking to the future we can see from evidence from this project that we can predict where to put new features and uh, we can use flood modelling techniques to show the effectiveness of that location uh, and use um, computer software to s tell us how large the features need to be and the, and the location of them. So this data can now be applied, hopefully, uh, to, to other catchments around the country of the similar scale or even to uh, put it on a larger scale and see if it actually has any effect on a, on a larger size river. As well as uh, recording measurements to show the reduction in flood risk, the main primary objective of this project, we're also showing the multi-purpose benefits of these features. Here we have a water quality pump sampler where we're showing the benefits to water quality these types of features have. Features like this one, an online pond, are constantly slowing the water down, which is taking sediment out of the channel. This just works by letting the water settle and the sediment drops out. I, I got involved with the project after uh, flooding in, in the village of Belford. Uh, they want to try and stem the, the rush of water that goes through the village. With, uh, we seem to be getting more flash floods, you know, heavy rainfall over a short period of time. and. Uh, I think Mark Wilkinson from Newcastle University approached me. The project uh, seems to be uh, having some reasonable effects on the, the flooding in Belford. I know just after they finished the first work on the land, the, uh, there was a considerable storm and uh, it, Belford didn't flood. So I think the, uh, and, and the dams that put in, they were holding water, so it did have some effect, yeah. We managed to find a number of areas uh, which, which suit both of us that don't affect the farming and, and can hold water. So uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with the way things are working. The work that's been done has been done when it hasn't affected the farming, whether livestock or whether fields are in uh, arable rotation and uh, work in the woodlands has been done you know, out with the shooting season and things like that. So it, yeah, it's worked, no problem. The timing and everything's been okay. The important thing is to find the right site and the, I mean, there's, there are plenty of sites on the farm, but they have to uh, have very little impact on, on the output of the farm. Uh, using permanent pasture, which recovers very quickly after it's flooded, works well. Using uh, field corners in our, when the fields are in arable rotation works well. And, and also in woodlands, uh, all those areas are, are, are you know, good areas and, and, and don't affect the output of the farming. Well, we've been working on the project for a couple of years now. It has gone a bit slower than we first thought, 
but we've been working very closely with the landowners and we've had to build trust with the local landowners and the local community because it's, it's a new approach we're taking here. Well, we've done quite a lot of work in the catchment and we've put in quite a, quite a number of features uh, and all those are having a real effect on the flood risk in Belford. Uh, but there are some more features that we want to put in place before moving down and doing some more works in the town to help reduce the flood risk a bit further. What we want to happen next is we want the Belford is a demonstration project. We want this idea to be taken up in other catchments, in other communities, on other other land around the country potentially. So what we're doing is we're working with partners. We're we're showing people what the Belford project can deliver. But once we put all the features in place, Newcastle University will continue to monitor the, the, the river flow and how the features operate. Because what we need to do is we need to prove that this works. So we need to, to gather that data so that future projects that, that come along that want to take, adopt this approach, they, they know how effective it has been in Belford. And they, they know how cost effective the schemes, schemes could be in other parts of the country. For communities such as Belford that aren't going to get traditional defences, this sort of approach is going to give real solutions, real benefits and at a fraction of the cost. If you look at some of the costs of building huge walls and all of the uh, interruption to lifestyle by putting them in areas which are known to flood, by doing this, and at a time particularly when government is going to be strapped for cash for years to come, this is quite honestly a breakthrough. It's cheap and it's effective and it works.